contract. Okay, you have the left main stem. Usually this is a short left main stem. Most people have got a long left main stem, but this is a short left main and you've got the LED again and second flex. There is, the second flex supplies the, the posterior aspect of our, of our heart. You can see it's well defined. They are not loading. This is a, an angiogram of a normal, a normal angiogram per se. Okay. And we've got the, the optus managing. We call them OM. They supply the lateral O of the heart. These are the ones. Okay. Then we come to the right coronary artery. So the right coronary artery, it's a very easy way to, to identify it. It's always the mix of a C shape. You can see it's, it's a C shape. Okay. We have got the corners here, the acute margin, posterior descending artery there, and you've got posterior ventricular branch here. Okay, so there is that verification. Basically, what we do, we deal in the cath lab easy. If there is any narrowing between here and there, we can scan it or, or, or stake it for bypass if it is a CTO. But sometimes we have some CTOs which will come back and you just do them. These small bar branches here, we there deal with them. If there is any broken and then patient is coming with chest pain with posterior changes on the ECG. We are we can open it and just put a drug a looking small balloon just to open it and, and give it some drugs. That's all. I said the right coronary artery supply the right red from and right ventricle. So this is just the now what I'm looking at these are the basic views we we use the in the cat lab. So as you can see, just pretend this is a patient. <laughs> so in the cat lab, we have a PA cranial. Obviously the cranial, is, this is where the head is, and PA cordial. Okay. PA cranial, when we are doing uh, the left coronary arteries, PA cranial are good for LED and diagonal. Okay. Then you have a PA cordial. Just let me just go through this again. When we are doing PA cranial, the, the intensifier points towards the, the head of the patient. PA cord or the image intensifier points towards the, the, the foot of the patient. So we have other views which we do and we, we, we usually go around. So the, the essence of taking me different views is obviously to enable us to assess the heart in more profile. Okay, you have got a right anterior cordo, which is a very good view if you are assessing the second flex. And the RIO, this is just a straight one. We use this view in most cases when we are doing a graftive vessel. And you have right anterior cranial. This view is good when you are doing the LED, the left anterior descending artery more especially if there is a narrowing in the proximal aspect of the heart. Okay, guys, are you with me? Are you okay? Yes, sir, we are with you. Yeah, if I'm very fast to try to slow me down. <laughs> okay? So I did talk about the PA cranial. The PA cranial, it is a good view, which we assess the diagonal, and the left anterior descending artery because it will give you a very nice narrowing there. Okay. And the LAO cranial, it's also a good view for the LAD. LAO, we rarely do use it, but we use it mostly is when you're trying to engage the right and right coronary artery. That's the view we usually use. Okay. And we have the PAO, LAO cordos. This is the, what we call the spider, because uh, uh, then I think I should have, uh, I think I should have shown you some. Uh, it's when you take a picture of it, it will represent more or like like a spider. We have the left main starting, then we have the the LED on top, and the second flex on the on the bottom. So it forms like a verification like this. So that's why we call it a spider. 
This is a very good view if you were assessing the left main and the proximal second flex, proximal, proximal LAD. This is the best view you use. So as a radiographer, most of our consultants, or I can say they, they depend on the radiographer to advise them which views are better. So as a radiographer, you need to acquaint yourself with the views that we use in the cat lab. You know, as I put it there, cranial views are good for LAD. So LAD is attached with septo and the, the diagonal. So you just have to work out, oh, okay, we are, we are working on this, uh, Vessel. These are the views which the doctor will I would help him to to use to have a good picture. Sorry about that. So and this is the one of our labs on the, this is one of our labs in the Breaking Show Hospital. You can see this is the GE one of the. It is a very good equipment. It's got very nice radiation doses are very low. So at the bottom there you can see the X-ray. And that's the image intensifier. Obviously, we'll discuss in the next year. I'll try to squeeze in the radiation protection. So this view, it's called LAO, right coronary. LAO, it is the view which we use when we're trying to engage the right coronary artery. You can see it there. Yeah? That's the right coronary artery. This artery, if you can look at it, you see this where I'm pointing. It is narrow, but we will not intervene. Why? Because if you look at the floor, the floor is perfect. It's not blocking or impacting the floor. So what in usually these cases, we use a, what we call a pressure wire just to assess if it is, it is impacting on the floor of the blood this side. So we use a pressure wire, but looking at it from my own experience, we rarely intervene in this, in this case. So the LAO, left anterior oblique, that's the view we use to engage the right coronary artery. As a radiographer, the doctors, okay, when, when you are working, they know oh, we're doing the right coronary. So as a radiographer, I just know this is the view we use. For the left, you can do, most consultants prefer to engage in LAO and some engage in PA. So this is a PA cranial for the right coronary artery. Okay. If you guys, if you remember, I, I showed you about, if you look at this caliber here, you can see this caliber as a narrow D. So basically, if it is significant more than 50%, we usually intervene. But in this case, we didn't do If you look at in the other view, the first view I showed you of the right is more than like this. The, the, the other second view, you can see it's more like significant. So that's uh, one of the advantages of checking picture in different direction, in different angles, it will give you a wide assessment. There are various things you can do with this. If you see, oh, I think one of the things I'll do is the next when the Wanga gives me another opportunity, uh, I will present on the IVS. This is where you usually take a camera, the ultrasound here and just take some picture. I think that will be the next project I will do with you guys, okay? So that's the LAO, left anterior oblique of the right coronary artery. You can see where my, my image in this fire is. It is on the right side of the, because this is the bed, that's where the edge of the patient will be. And this is the X-ray machine, okay? So just the, uh, in addition, just what I'm, I know I'm gonna talk about the, the radiation protection. You can see this is what, the shield we use when we, for the doctors when they're working, obviously it's for radiation protection. Okay, and if you see there, obviously this is just part of cosmetic. One of our patients here at Reading Show is the one who donated the money so that you can create an environment whereby the patient, when he's having a procedure, he feels secure or feels at easy. Okay, so now, we are looking at the, the left coronary artery. We talked about the left is composed of the left anterior descending artery and the second flex. So this is the second flex. And this is the, the LAD. If you look here, 
that's the left main. Left, uh, that's the left uh, LMS, okay, left main stem, okay. That's the branch, or oh, one of the doctors will call it, if you are in the wild, that's the main highway. Okay. So basically, if the patient has got the narrowing here, we don't even touch that patient. The first thing we do when we are doing that case is put in a balloon pump. The balloon pump will support the heart, then this patient will definitely go for surgery. We cannot intervene on that because the chances of, if we look at the benefit against the risk, the risk are high. So from the radiography point of view, that's my camera. As I said, when you're doing a PA codo, the image intensifier points towards the feet. This is where the feet of the patient will be. I don't know if someone is sorry about this daisy. This, which, this is a balloon pump. If you want, we can talk about it. It's uh, the one we use to insert it into a put in the iota to help the, the patient to, with the obviously to support the heart. Okay. Obviously, this is a skirt, which was part of uh, our irrigation protection to protect the, 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 the consultant. Usually, the consultant stands here. So, what happened is um, just say, sorry about if I can go out of, uh, of uh, subject. Most of our consultants, they have got uh, shiny legs. Why? Because the, most of them, they don't wear pads because the x-ray is coming down here. And if they are not using it properly, in the hair, they are being gambled, they are being exposed. So they usually lose hair. <laughs> okay. There is another view here for the left. This is the light anterior oblique cordon. As I pointed out in the, in the other section, the cordon views are used for second flicks. So if you can assess the second phrase, it looks okay. There is no blockage or narrowing. However, if you look at the caliber of the LED, you can see it's got you diseased. There, there it is narrowed. So this needs further assessing. Okay, so this is it, the LED. And you've got C septo, that's the diagonal there. So if you look at the, this, another picture here, this is how how the picture will look, okay? So you have got the image intensifier pointing on the right side of the patient and it, and towards the cordo. So this view, it's in between the right and the cordo view. So that's the light anterior oblique. Basically, this is uh, some of the things we, Mr. Kanyesha used to teach us in equipment. I think it's Mr. Kanyesha or should be Mr. Banda. I don't know if he's still around at Iver in one. <laughs> Those. Okay, again, we look at the, another view. This is the right anterior, right anterior oblique, it's a cranial. So in here, the patient sits, uh, the head of the patient is here. So obviously what you do as a radiographer, this is the basic key. Our goal is uh, the head of interest is the heart. Whatever we do in the cath lab, we focus on the heart. So in this view, as I said it earlier on, cranial views are good for LED. If you can see how we can assess the LED, that's the left anterior descending artery. It is going down to the apex. Someone, some people are wondering, those who are not familiar with cardiac procedure, this is a, a, a catheter which we use. And just to so sorry, this is the, the catheter, which is about one and this week. We use most of the catheters we use at Jenkins. Those who are familiar with the cat lab, they know. I think when he has been, I don't know if he has stopped working in the cat lab, but he knows these are Jenkins. We have got different type of catheters, specifically for the vessel you are engaging, basically for the, for the left and the right. If you look at the left catheter, it makes a hundred and almost 180, and the right is almost 90 degrees. I'll just go back just to show you the right of the catheter. You can see the angle is very narrow there. This is the best view. You can see it's most 90. So that's the catheter we are looking at. They differ. So on this page, if you look at the, if you look at the LED from here up to here, 
Yeah, I think you. Is anyone can tell me what you can observe on this base on the light? Yeah, what do you think of what's happening here? Okay, just gonna put it on. Okay, if you look at this caliber, it's it's narrowed here. So obviously it is more than 50 percent. So in this case, we intervene on this on this scenario and we can use a stent. A stent is a scaffold. What will happen is you will put a wire in here, balloon this area. When we balloon, we use the special balloon, which are meant for cardiac actually. So when you balloon, then you open it up. When you open it up, then you put a stent. A stent, it will be permanent in the patient's heart. It will mean so that it keeps it, the heart really open. And the patient usually put on the aspirin for the rest of their lives. Obviously, to, to prevent it, restonosis. Restonosis whereby the brokerages come back if patients are not here looking after their stents. Obviously, that, that, that is meaning not taking their medication after the PCI, after the, the procedure is done, okay? This is the PA cranial. PA cranial, it's very good for assessing the left main. And if you look at what I talked about, the LED for the proximal, you can easily see this vessel is narrow here. So really, it needs to be intervened. If you look at the other, it's a down there, that's fine. That looks okay. But from here up to here, that, that this vessel needs to be attended to, need to be stented. So you've got the, a lot of views. So these views will just give you, okay, this is, but if you really want to measure, oh, how long is the stent I'm gonna put? This is the best view because you're gonna, you'll put maybe sometimes a wire from here up to here, then take a picture, okay, how much do you think? For me or someone who works in the cath lab, I know there's a colleague of mine who works here in Lusaka, I think heart center, he talk, we talked a bit. He can tell you, this is a, you are looking at, the, this is a two millimeter. So you are looking at 2.5 or 30. You can go 32, 38 stents. A stent, as I said, pointed out here on, that's the scaffold which will maintain the vessel open. So you start, how we put a stent is we go from, if you look at here, you can start that, you go from the healthy, healthy portion to another healthy portion. So from here up to here. Because if you stent here, then there is this part which will remain. So it will affect the patient in the future. So you basically, if you need to stent, you go from health to health, from here up to somewhere here. So that would be a long, Stent. We usually have those these stents in our in our store. Okay. This is another view area cranial. As I said, it point in the area on. You can see from how the, the how the X-ray equipment will move. Okay. And this is the picture you get. It is very good to assess cranial views. Are good good to assess left anterior descending artery the LED. Okay. Look at this caliber. You can see you can easily assess the vessel very well. In. And it's also very good to assess the proximal part of the second flex. You can see here, you can see this caliber is very good. You can assess it. Oh, yeah. Although you can see some a little bit of disease developing here, the narrowing developing here, but they have not reached a stage where you can intervene. Yeah, just okay is okay and obviously you need to just try for intervention yes this one it needs to be intervened okay i did talk about the spider this is the picture of a spider as i say it looks like a spider okay that's how you the x-ray equipment will look it will go on the left side then code towards the feet of the patient okay. this is the pedal Usually they are our doctor's screen, but it is the radiographer who acquire the images. So we are more like a boss. <laughs> yeah. So can you take a picture? So you've got to, if we look at the, the image here, 
you have got, this is the catheter, it's ending here, and you've got the left main stem here, and you've got the, the second flex, that's the OM. If you look here also, this you can assess it in another views, but I don't think it's warranted. In other views, it looks okay. It doesn't, okay? So if you look at this, this is our LED, the left anterior descending artery. And I think we have been discussing about this region. Even in this view, it gives you about, no, this region needs to be attended, you need to be intervened. So that's the area you're gonna intervene. The other, when the doctor is struggling to, to wire, we usually be what we do, like the stents, the balloons, whatever the eye base we use, we will put a wire which will go into the, the vessel we are intervening. So this is the best view the doctors will do. Oh, can I, which view do you recommend so that I can put a wire in the LED or the spider or, or the second flex? Just so let's do the spider. So when the wire there, then the balloon will be, you, they will be transported through the wire. So the first thing we do when in intervening, we have to wire the vessel. So that's the best view for wiring. We're almost getting to the end of this first part of it. So we have got the, what we call AOB gram, left ventricular gram. So usually we do it in a light anterior break 30. Obviously the essence of this is to look at the, the function of uh, the left ventricle. This is the left ventricle, that's the iota, that's the descending, ascending iota. And you can see, we have got another catheter. If you can see, it's got a pigtail, it's got, if you look at it, it's got a, more like a, the tail of a pig. So we call it a pigtail. Why do we use, and it's got a lot of holes in it, or at, from here it's got a lot of holes, because we are injecting a lot of contrast. So it needs to come out with so much, pressure. so that's why, it, the catheter we use. Basically, in this one, we are assessing the ejection fraction or movement of the left ventricle, and you can also assess the metral valve. Most of the, nowadays, we, we don't do most of the AOVgram because the patients, they usually have their echo, echocardiogram done before they come to the cat lab. However, we call the, there is a certain patients who are having heart attack who come from home. We call it primary PCI. These are emergency patients who are just having an heart attack from home. One of the things, what the, what can I say? The government or the NHS program is when someone is getting an heart attack, he has to be in the hospital within 90 minutes. And the 110 minutes, the patient should be on the table. So regardless of which section they are coming from, that's the gold standard of doing things. So in that case, if the patient is coming, is coming for, for primary care, after they, we, we do all the procedure, we do the angiogram, if we are proceeding, or if, if Wendy, you've got a question? Oh, Wanga, sorry. Do you want to? Moderate, do you want to let Wanga ask it the question? Moderator. I, I think it was uh, by mistake. I've seen the hand has uh, gone down. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. All right. So basically when you have done a PCI, most of the consultants would request this to an angiogram. We have got a special equipment which we use for left ventricular gram, yeah, and you set it for, uh, for about 30 mils of contrast injected at high pressure. So then you can have this good picture, okay? The next one will be, oh, I think, sorry about that. I thought I have done the iotogram. There is another section of the iotogram. And in this section, we usually look at the, the uh, aortic valve, and sometimes we also look at the, the graft. I think that's another section for, for presentation about the graft and I can do the IBIS. I've done the, this is basically simple angiogram, what we do in the cat lab. 
the patient will come in who we'll have an angiogram. If there are any narrowing, then we can intervene. If there are no narrowing, or if they're narrowing a uh, midline, we don't. Sometimes we just assess them, and sometimes they are medically managed. Basically, you have to wear between the benefits and the risk. I don't know if you are this juncture and you want some question or we can go and do the radiation protection. I don't know what the moderator think. Yeah, I think due to time, we can go straight to radiation protection. Then at the end of the two presentation, people can ask questions. Okay, that's fine. Uh, are you able to see the staff flow and radiation protection? Are you able to see, on, see it on the screen? Yes, sir. Okay. Basically, we have got the consultant here. Is well using. This is our X-ray tube. Okay, that's our patient here, and that's the X-ray shield. He's using it. He has got some lead glasses. One of the things we have now in the all my regulation is all consultants should be wearing red glasses. These are important to protect our, our consultant, all those who are involved in the procedure, most especially those who are near the source of radiation. As you know, the closer you are to the source of radiation, the more dose you get. So in, in this section, I'll talk about the type of uh, PPE or personal protective equipment which doctors use and the PPE for other staff, members of staff. Obviously, the other thing is you also need the thyroid collar. So I think it is literally before I was late today, because obviously I was working, one of our consultant professor was not wearing the, uh, the lead, the, the thyroid collar. I challenge him. One of the things as we radiographers, we are in charge of radiation. So regardless of who, 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 which position he is, if he's not doing whatever, for me, I just say, oh, I'm not gonna switch on the X-ray. You need to put on your PP. You need to use the shield. Obviously, obviously advantage is I'm radiation, radiation protection supervisor. So I've got a bit of weight. If someone doesn't want to listen to me, then I can put it to my manager say, look, this, this consultant doesn't want people. Obviously we are protected and we are supported. That makes our job easy. In this uh, segment of uh, my presentation, we, I just looked at the basic things we, we work on in radiation protection in the cat lab. Nothing's important or nothing, but see, radiation protection is everyone's responsibility. I know the radiographer are the, the backbone of it, but, and they are the driving force of that, okay? I'm sure I even, uh, I think uh, the guy at the Osaka Heart, I think we are working with, um, I need to send him some of the things which we do here. Obviously it's part of sharing like this, uh, this forum you have presented, we share ideas, we learn from each other. I also share what I know. At the end of the day, we make ourselves better. Ah, I think uh, I chose this, uh, <laughs> slide because I think when I was in Zambia, I think most people like to take that drink. And they, that gentleman, if everybody knows, remember him, I think he was one of our famous people who made us. That's Mr. William Rongen and the, the castle. The reason I put up there, because both of them, they, obviously they started making the beer and he discovered the X-ray in the 1890s. So they collided. So oh, what is a coincidence here? Yeah. Obviously, you will, everyone knows the Ronjen discovered the X-ray by mistake, obviously. Then we have X-rays. Although he didn't know what he discovered, they, they, were, they were looking at this black thing. Oh, okay. We call it X-ray. We don't know what kind of them. That's how the name X-ray came about. Okay. In the cath lab or in the radiation, in the department or in the UK, Basically, we have got two regist uh, registration which we follow. We've got uh, the IRI-17. This covers the staff radiation. So obviously, you can download the document from the UK government and see what you're supposed to do. Okay, And you have got uh, the OMA. 
2017. This covers radiation protection for the patient. I think one of the things I like about uh, this place is the uh, more, or this generation of this, and most people are now more acquainted with becoming of YouTube. They they learn more, they ask more questions. Of, oh, how, what will happen if I have the procedure? How much radiation am I getting? Is it gonna affect my baby? Or, or is it gonna, am I going to be affected? Am I going to have leukemia? Am I going to have cataracts? All those things. And it just makes some interesting things to, to look at. Okay, so basically, these are the two most important uh, registration we deal with in the cath lab in radiation protection. As a radiation protection supervisor, we have always have a copy of that to refer to guide us on what we do. We also have the radiation protection advisors. These are medical physicists. So if we have any issues, these are the people we try to consult. And if we have, I mean, they are, we pay them to advise us. They are our advisors. Okay. The problem with X-ray is you cannot see it, you cannot feel it. It's a hidden, you cannot see. One of the examples I can make you, I think people work in the cat lab, or if you have looked at the slides in the last segment, when the patient is coming on the, you saw the pedal, it's near the patient's where they'll come out. So one of the incidents is the patient was wanted to come out and he stepped on, and he stepped on, the pedal. It is the radiographer's responsibility after the procedure is done to block the x-ray. So this radiographer didn't block the x-ray. Obviously, it's, we, we, we have to understand it's a learning point where everyone makes mistakes, but it, it is, if you can avoid it, try to avoid it. Okay. So you will not see the x-ray is going on unless you look at this the monitors oh yeah yeah we are explaining or when you are outside because we always have got the safety lights when the x-ray is switched on and they when the, the, the radiation is on they will light up then somebody will come and say you guys are you explaining you don't know I mean so basically that's what we call hidden gender you cannot see it and that's the uh, one of the pictures of uh, how people used to protect themselves in the old time. I think nowadays things have improved, the gear has improved. Okay. So in the cat lab, one of the problems we have is the scatter radiation. That's where we usually have a problem. So if you look at this is our patient, that's the X-ray tube, that's the imaging test fire. So the scatter radiation. So as I pointed out, one of the rules of radiation, the closer you are, we call it inverse square law. Everybody know, remember that. I think it's Mr. Ganesha or Mr. Banda who told us that. Yeah. So if you have got a big patient, obviously there'll be big scan. How do we governize this scatter? Obviously, that's why I said it is the responsibility of the radiographer to make sure that everyone who is involved in the procedure is wearing PPE, personal protective equipment, these are LEDs. If he needs to wear the LED glasses like a consultant who's near, he needs to be wearing them. If he needs to wear the shields, he needs to wear them. Those who are not involved, or those, they are raw, like a, a nurse, a running nurse. A running nurse, I'm sure those who work in the cut is the one who, who go and get the, the material which will be needed for the procedure. So the running nurse or the radiographer stays at the back of their, they are a bit distance. You don't need to be close to the source of radiation. So it's one of the things we look at, making sure that all the staff who don't need to be close to the source of radiation move away. And what it is, is one of the radiation protection you can help the doctor is when they are taking, when they are doing a floor, the floor is, a time less than the acquisition of the of the image, so you advise the doctor in, or do a lot of scroll, and then you store them. Unless there is need to acquire the image, just, yes, I need to have that image. Yeah. Well, what we have, obviously I can talk my my for myself in terms of obviously I've been in the cat lab for 
some time and they have uh, a good relationship with one of some of the consultants and some of them are my age men so we can relate to each other and say look you don't need to do this i advise them on radiation protection and they listen okay so as i said one of the big problem we have in the, the cat lab book is cat radiation coming from the patient if you have got a big patient there will be more scat the dose will go up we have got some large pads which we have ordered, which you can we can help you reduce scatter. And I think it's one of the things uh, I will just see had a trial last week. So once we get the information in the in the near future, I will try to talk about the large pads as part of radiation protection. Okay, some of the practical things we do in the in the lab is wearing monitoring badge. I know we are given monitoring badge. Some of the people don't see wear them. But the reason is that's the only way we can read how much those you are being exposed to. So as a radiographer, before you start the procedure, you make sure that everyone is where is wearing their monitoring badge. If they don't have wear 40 Spare bags, we, we give them. It's, it's it's for us in our lab. It's the standard view. When we do the the wood checklist, we make sure it is there. It, it, uh, is Oma regulation met? Yes. Meaning, okay, everything the staff is wearing. Okay. Uh, the other thing we have with the monitoring badges is the. Uh, I uh, unfortunately I'm one of the. Uh, radiation protection supervisor. So I intend to deal with some of these issues because every month we send them back to our radiation protection advisors to we'll see to assess them and or, or read them. So one of the, the staff, because there is a limit to how much dose you can get. So for a consultant, which we call first operators, they cannot get more than two milligrams for, for for in a year, if they get that, they need to be classified. Anyone who gets more than that, two milligrams, you need to be investigated. Six milligrams, you are classified. Being classified, which means you cannot work in the cat lab because your doses are high. And that's the only way we can know how much doses you can, is by wearing the monitoring badge. One of our staff went on holiday to Ireland. She took the, obviously she came from work, she went to the airport. So it was exposed. And she came back. When she came back, the dose was high. So we have to investigate. Basically, we do an interview. We ask the patient, the, 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 our, our, our colleague, you, did you take to, did you have the bias? Oh, she agreed. Oh, yeah, sorry, I took her to, uh, to, a, to I passed through the scanner. Because when we pass through the scanner, a lot of people who, are, who travel, <laughs> They, they use a radiation, so it was exposed. So, so she was saved because obviously we owned her not to be using. You don't need to be taking our badges when you are on holiday. So these are some of the things you need to tighten up and make sure that every time, when at every month, you you bring them back so that we we take them back to our radiation protection advisors for reading and we give you new ones. So it's a challenge. Most consultants don't want to wear them, but we have to force them that they need to be wearing them. There is one consultant in Newcastle. He never used to wear them. He's an old, uh, old consultant. So after some time, he came back. Oh, yeah, I'm not saying I've got the ailment. I think it's because of radiation. I, I worked too much in the cath lab. He never used to use the lead, the, the shield. So I wonder, look at the record. So he was just putting it in the blouse. I mean, our record shows that. Your doses are within range, they are normal. So you can see, although you may think it, it's not important, but at the end of the day, it is your life and your safety is your responsibility. The other thing I'll look at is laid down PPE. You have to make sure that everyone who is involved in the procedure is wearing correct personal protective equipment. For nurses, radiographers, physiologists, they used, you need to have a 0 0.25 lead cottage. For scrub nurse, first operator, second operator, they need to have 0 0.35 lead equivalent. Why do they have more? Because they are near the source of 
radiation. Okay. The other thing we have in the cath lab, we call safety signs on the door. Every door in the once you, you put on a, the safety signs, they are important so that people they don't just bag. In. As I say, you don't in the X-ray in the cath lab. Although we to put it in another way, it is a controlled area. A controlled area, that's where the exit is being exposed. They say you don't just go in without knocking or you need without PP. Our policy in our department is we make sure that anyone who wants to go into the cash lab needs to put, if there's any procedure going on, he needs to put a PPE, then he goes in. You cannot you know, can just go in without wearing them. Because you can you think, you look at the sign, oh, the light is off. But immediately you go in, the doctor place on it, okay? So when you are doing a, a procedure, these are basic things, or even if we are at, when I was at Kitra Central Hospital, we make sure that the doors are laded and the doors are closed when we're doing it. And the, obviously, we I did discuss on that surface stage in, in distance, inverse square law. Obviously, the, the closer you are, the borders, the far away you are. I think they say if you take a quarter, you move two steps backwards, you double the amount of dose you, 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 you get, you reduce it so for so much that double. So it's always important when you are acquiring an image, you take one or two steps backwards or away from the source, then you get less dose. Okay. Obviously, any department you go to before you enter, even if you start working or you are visiting or you are, you are the first, you are, that's your first time to go, to go into that domain. Every department has got the local rules. Obviously, this is you. These are written in conjunction with radiation protection advisors. We just this emphasizing what you do in the in the cath lab and where what you're supposed to do, where you need to stand in whatever. So everything is invited into the local rules. You need to, each department has got local rules. I know I, when I was at Peter Central, we never used to have kept local rules, but obviously now things have changed. I'm sure now they have got local rules and they have got protocols. Obviously the world has moved on from when I was there in the nineties. <laughs> Oh, you can see the invisible man. So that's the. <laughs> so this is one of the examples of how the, our doctors dress up for, for a procedure. You can see he's wearing lead glasses, and not only that, the important thing with the, the monitoring badge is to make sure the monitoring badge is inside. One of the incident I had, I think, is some years ago, one of the, our consultants was wearing a monitoring badge outside. So he had the eye goes, it was almost classified. Until, so it is important when you are issuing monitoring badge, we tell our, our, our staff, oh, you need, you know, you, this is how you wear the badge. And basically they recommend you wear it just under the on your abdomen, obviously near the body. Okay. And I did talk about the the type of lead you can see this is a, a 0 0.35 this one was one of our registrar years left yeah so he was wearing 0 0.5 because they are near to the source of radiation that's why they need more protection compared to other stuff like me radiographer would wear 0 0.25 millimeters because we are away from the source okay so apart from that our, the, our radiation protection, they also request us, they, they need to wear head glasses. And if you can see this, this is a monitoring badge for the high. So every, you, all the operators, the scrub nurse, they have to wear this to, to know how much their highs are being exposed. So it's always a part of the, job as a radiographer, that you have to make sure people are complying, they are wearing it. Because by wearing them, that's the only way you can know how much they are being exposed to. And you have got the lead glass shield. This needs to, you need to put it in between you and the patient and the x-ray equipment here. This is the physiologist. So the physiologist, they don't need to be inside the inside the examination, although they can they can come out here. So they usually, we, we have a special 
screens which are lead coated which protect them. August, as I talked about, the important thing is compliance. You can talk about having lead, you know, all these things. People need to be wearing them. It is, it is always a struggle. They are losing them. Oh, and most of them, people like taking them home. They end up in the in their own drill. I watch them. I, I have no problem with that. I always tell them, okay, fine. But this is a learning process. You, you don't need to be wearing. We have set a designated area where after the process, after you, after work, you leave it there. It's easy for the people who are changing the badges. And, and it's easy for, for you to come and collect it when you need it. Because you don't when you're at home, and you don't need it. That's why you, you end up going to the airport with your badge. So it's always important to leave them. And it's always important as a radiographer to keep on, although we say you have the crack on them, just, just make sure they are complying. Okay. So as a staff, we have male and female. Yeah, I think you see, I don't want to, to, to talk about the other. So it's important to, for our female staff who are expecting, it's always important you tell your, your line manager or the radiation protection. So what we do, we have got a risk assessment. We assess the, the, the staff and mostly what we do is anyone who obviously was expecting, we know when the fetus is very sensitive, or we don't want to expose that. What we do is for a member of staff, if it's a nurse, we, we encourage or we talk to the manager, their managers, so if they can put them in the, Usually in recovery, they they don't come into the cat lab good, and it's obviously as the pregnancy progress, you don't expect someone to be wearing lead prone because obviously we know they are heavy. So we try to work out their working arrangement. We change their routine, and in a way, we are protecting them and we're protecting the unborn baby. That's part of radiation protection. From the other part, we have got the patient. The rule now is anyone from 12 to 55, you have to ask for a pregnancy. If obviously as we as we move on, we have emergencies. At that point, as a radiographer, you have to think of like a primary PCI in an emergency. You look at the risk and the benefit. If it's an emergency, if we don't do the procedure, the patient will die. However, if it's a, just a routine angiogram, the patient is able to manage medically. We just say, doc, I think the patient is pregnant. Or if it's not, we are in doubt, we always say, basically you ask the patient if there's any chance of pregnancy. If the patient is, no, I'm not sure. We do a, a pregnancy test. From there, if there's negative or positive, depending on that, however, if it's an emergency, I always tell the, the, the doctor, it is your call. This is my position. But if the benefits outweigh the risk, let's do the procedure. I've done a PCI on eight months pregnancy. All that I can do is, as the basic, you just use the lady, we just cover the as much as you can provide to protect the patient. But the, the end result is you have to make sure that the patient live for another day. So as we go come to the, the end of the, this presentation, I think it, as we just to recap, the three most important things as a radiographer, as they expect us, there are three things, the time, the time, that's the time of exposure, you're being exposed. The longer you take time to be exposed, the more acquisition you take, that's the accumulation of time, the more dose you get. So what we usually you advise is there are some, maybe in city war, that's a chronic or total occlusion because you want to see the back feeling of the heart. You take longer acquisition. Some people, they will take a picture, they can see the vessel, but they keep on acquiring until they die disappear, that's not necessary. Say, look, you have taken the picture. You don't need to go on. That's more dose you have. 
you are, you are, you are impacting on the patient at the end of the day. And obviously, we are also impacting on the member of staff because we, we are being exposed to scattered radiation. The other point we can look at is distance. I think I've, from the, I've talked about distance. The, it's the rule of the thumb. The closer you are, the more dose you get. The far away you, uh, you are, the less dose you get. So just use that principle. If you don't need to be near the X-ray table, you don't, need, you don't need to be there. Just stand away from that. We always encourage us, yeah, our running nests, stand away from the table that there. You don't need to be there. You know? Obviously, this rule will throw it away in terms of uh, in an emergency. You, you have to deal with the situation thereby we would allow people to come in, to provide the health, like an artist, they need to intubate, all those things. You can be doing it, or they want to put in the Lucas machine. The Lucas machine is one of the equipment we use in the cath lab, which will, it's a machine which provides CPR at the highest level and effective. So if you need to, you have to check, put it on the chest of the patient. So, and the, obviously the doctor is trying to open the vessel. You can still do it, you're trying to put it on. In that case, you, you know it's an emergency. You cannot do anything about it. The last and most thing is shielding. Shielding, obviously we are looking at the PPE and all those devices we use, we need to use. We have them, but it is our responsibilities as radiographers to ensure that the doctors, the operators, the junior doctors, the scrub nurse are using those things. They are wearing their PPE properly. They are wearing their monitoring badge properly. They are making sure that they are, they are laid, are being kept correctly. I know some of the guys, when they finish the procedure, they just leave their legs on the floor. At the end of the day, these things need to, they will have cracks if they are not properly kept. And if they have cracks, you will do find that the, what we have, we have a program. Every year we screen our lead aprons. So to make sure if there is any damage, a lead apron may look okay to, to the naked eye, but inside is just got cracks. So one of our consultants are doing the front part of it was damaged, but in the front, the outside looks not okay. So he was being exposed and he was angry and he had the right to be because it was our, it is the, our responsibility to make sure that it, the shielding is being given, they're protecting him. And it's enshrined in the law that obviously the employer has the responsibility to provide the personal protective for you to perform your duties. So the other thing I can just say in the, my presentation is the radiation protection is not the radiographer's responsibility. It is everyone you get involved into it. You get people get involved. I've seen some people say, oh, radiographer, you're not wearing your legs. What else? Obviously, I, I understand one of the things because I don't want to have a backache, you, obviously, because of wearing the, the leg every day. So I try to, I'm the one who, 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 who has got the button for the x-ray. So I make sure that I'm the last person to wear that. So we try to involve everyone, get involved. And the other thing is we usually have, every three months, we have audit meetings. At the audit meetings, we have got a slot where we talk about radiation protection obviously emphasizing on the things which will help the department to move forward. And we try to send people for courses, we help them obviously expose themselves and develop the department. On that note, I would like to thank this opportunity you have given me. I'm very grateful. And I think 